Space is not the final frontier. There is a vastness yet to be discovered, a realm of mystery and imagination, a place of lasting peace and joy. You know there is more to life. You know you have heard and seen things that no one can explain. We welcome you to Come Up Higher. Join us in our search for the ultimate adventure, the ultimate conflict, and the ultimate romance. Discover the secrets of the heavenly places. Hello and welcome. This is Aslan's Place, Exploring Heavenly Places. Today our goal is to follow God's lead and then use the 66 books of the Holy Bible as the final test of what happens here today. We encourage those who are in the room and joining us live online to share questions and comments. This is also an opportunity to have a practice time for all the spiritual gifts, but including discernment. Throughout this time, people in the room and online will be sharing what they are discerning, which includes all the physical senses, and then we'll test that information together and help everyone practice. And it's as we come into agreement about what God is doing, when we really see him move in power. And that is our goal today, is to experience God's power, and bring glory to his name. We are always in the process of unfolding revelation. And uh, as of two days ago, I, I was uh, asking the Lord, okay, what are we going to be doing on Saturday? I can remember having to prepare for hours and hours and hours for an all day seminar and now I do not know what I'm gonna do and it actually came to yesterday when I had a, a slight sense of uh, what might happen today and it was not until this morning after I woke up I wanna say that I, I could confirm from the Holy Spirit that what I thought I, w I was now discerning and I do not believe in this context we have talked about the windows of heaven. I, I, I'm not sure, and it doesn't matter anyway because that's, that's what we're going to do, because that's why I am discerning. Now, what is important about all this is that I, I had the initial dream about the windows on my birthday, January 12, 2015. I think just after that we had a summit, and during the summit we explored all this and we wrote a prayer, and then it like went on the back burner for a long time, until very recently um, we started filling the windows more and more. And what happens to me when I pray for people for deliverance, I start feeling this rotation take place in the deliverance. And it'll go uh, from the windows to the thrones to um, different things on the back of my head. And, and quite often, I will just sit there and I'll tell a person, okay, now the windows are being delivered, now the branches are being delivered, now the paths are being delivered, now the thrones are being delivered, now the powers are being delivered, and, and there's this constant rotation. And I still do not have much of an understanding of of the importance of the rotation, though we are finding more and more that the windows of heaven are very, very important. Just after we had the, um, I actually had two dreams I'll share with you about the windows of heaven, Chuck Pierce came out with a word saying that the revelation was coming about windows of heaven. And that always helps me and encourages me when uh, prophetic people start confirming what the Lord is showing us. So we want to welcome the Lord's presence because we cannot do this without him. Uh, trust me, I cannot do this. Uh, I have maybe 10 or 15 minutes worth of material right now. And so we are living in hope and trust and faith that the Lord is going to um, um, open up wisdom and understanding for us. 
Father, we thank you for your presence and your goodness and your mercy and your kindness. And we thank you that you are always teaching us. And we know that this is not an esoteric knowledge that really makes no difference in our personal lives, but it is information and revelation that, that helps your kingdom to advance in our lives. And Lord, our, our desire is to fall more and more in love with you, that you would give us the spirit of wisdom, understanding that we might know you better. And Lord, that as you give us revelation, that your kingdom will advance and we will see the, the enemy's influence decrease and decrease. And so we, we trust you right now to guide us and direct us. Uh, Lord, we just love you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you and your gifts. May you activate all the gifts of those of us that are uh, participating here and on the web. And I speak a special blessing to my son, Brian, that he will have wisdom, understanding, and help me out here. Amen. Okay, let's look at my dream. The stream is January the 12th, 2015. I was looking, so I was inside of a room, and I was looking at an open window, and I, I wondered in my dream, why is this window open? And then there was a branch coming through a hole in the window screen. So the window was open, there was a screen, and the branch was... Uh, It was almost like a cartoon type branch. It was like click, 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 click. And as it was doing this, it was growing. And it came through the window and it was a, a, uh, a bright white branch. So I, I would think that if it was an actual tree branch, it would be something like a birch. But actually it was light white. And it was coming through the window, click, 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 growing very rapidly. I went outside, so I'm in this room, and then I go outside, and I see another branch growing rapidly, and my dad was there, and I would think it, and I, again, I thought it was something like a, a birch branch. That was the first time I began to understand that perhaps the male side was the, um, on the right hand side of a person, and the female side was on the left side of a person. It's interesting, this last week, uh, someone uh, told me about a Netflix series called The Pyramid Code, which is very interesting uh, in terms of some of the revelation the Lord is giving us. Of course, this is based on Egyptians, which certainly were not followers of Yahweh or Elohim. But in the discussion, they believed that the male side was the right side and the female side was the left side. You see, truth is truth. And uh, many times we'd have people come for prayer sessions, especially women who say, well, my right side has all the problems, all, all the physical problems in my life are, are on my right side or they're on my left side. And I thought, oh, that's nice. Well, now I can say, well, that's probably your father's side. It's the right side or your mother's side. It's the left side. Logically, I thought, well, the problem was probably with my dad. Um, but as I prayed about it, I realized the problem was really on my mother's side. And, and so we have, we have the windows and the branches. So we started exploring all of this with the windows, the branches, and the roots. So I sent the dream to Barbara. I have your interpretation here. I'm not going to read it. Uh, this is before we knew anything. And then just before, um, so it was on the 12th, on February the 3rd, a, a friend of ours, Don, um, sent me this, and, and I'm not sure at this point she really, she didn't know what we had, had uh, discovered in the dream. She says, I will attempt to put a few things together briefly, include a word from yesterday, what I just heard right before the word was like a house temple with a window and the branch inside, I think. I also felt like the capstone that we had discerned a few weeks ago was above me. Then she said, she started singing, will I not, will I not, will I not open the windows of heaven? There's a whirlwind coming of a different sort. 
where the wheat will bow and the chaff will stand out, just as a righteousness with peace in the gate will enter into agreement, it's not too late. The lady of justice will no longer stand with the scales of justice and a sword in her hand. Every false witness and those who cheat will find the whirlwind under their feet. Not root nor branch, I say, will be left, and I will hide my own in the rock and the cleft, with eyes to see and ears to hear, my wrath turned away, they no longer fear. The streams have divided, the river runs through, and all who are in it will have life anew. So come to me, run to me, buy without money. The window will open and pour out a sundry. Where the root and the branches are in one accord, grace, grace will come, that but one can afford. The one who paid the price, the one who is peace, the one who is the branch and the tree, connectors, connectors are needed here. Don't turn away, there is no fear. Go back to what you know, just follow me, and all will become clear on the crystal sea. So then I have a dream on uh, February the 5th, 2015, two days later, and I think this is just before we had uh, our annual summit. And this dream was a, a lot more profound, and every time I share the dream, we get more and more insight about it. I was in a forest, and I realized that I needed to get back to my cabin to check out. I followed dirt road that seemed filled with wood chips. I don't know if we have figured that out yet. I knew this would take me back to the cabin. At one point, the ro road went in two directions, but then rejoined further up. So I was on this road, wood chips, so it kind of does a, I don't know what you'd call that, like this way and this way, like, like two roads going around a tree, and the roads join again. So in a sense, no matter which road I took, I'd end up in the same place. At so, one point, the road went two directions and rejoined further up. I could see this as I looked in the distance. I got to a warehouse, still following the road in the warehouse. I then looked through two windows. There was a window here and a window there. On the left side, so again, this is my mother's side. On the left side, I saw two cabins. I don't know about anything about the other cabin. The one on the left is the one I had rented. I looked at my feet and saw some stuff like gas cans, which would be power, that I might have had in the cabin. Then there were several coat hangers with clothes on them in my hand had I already removed some of the stuff from the cabin. I went to the cabin, and there was a caretaker, and I realized the caretaker was the enemy, and he said, you were to check out at 6 a.m., now, if you know anything about me, I am not a morning person. And I thought my dream, what a stupid time to check out. Then he said, you owe me 1,000 times for each minute that you didn't check out. By this time, it was now 9 a.m. So three hours, 1,000 times each minute. So then the dream stops. Now, if you go to Malachi, okay, Malachi chapter 3. This is a very, very familiar passage. And if you've been to church more than 10 minutes, you've heard a pastor use this verse. Uh, Malachi 3, will a man rob God, <clears throat> yet you have robbed me, but you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even the whole nation. Bring all the tithes in the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you, what? The, window. the windows of heaven, and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive them. So, windows are tied to blessings. And they're tied to so many blessings coming that the scripture says there will not be room enough to receive them. Is anybody living at that point right now? Okay, well, just wonder. 
So then perhaps we have your interest for today. So, now I discern windows like this. It's two parallel bars. They start right here, and they go all the way to the back. So pray and say, if Lord, could, I'd like to discern the windows of heaven. So for the moment, we kind of have to describe. So you're feeling from the very top of your head like two things that go across the top like if, if it was a mohawk. <sighs> no, not a mohawk. Well, but the way you do, you, you put two fingers and then you move back. So that would make So mohawk is like this, isn't it? Right. Yeah, this is like two mohawks. It's, oh, two separate lines. Two separate mohawks, uh, okay. yeah. So remember that uh, in my dream, the first dream was with windows and branches, right? So I can feel, I can feel the branches coming through my feet. Now, some of this is very interesting. Remember what the blind man said? First thing he says, I see people walking around like what? Trees. So, that interesting? So I can feel the branches. So when I put my hands down here, I feel the branches. So I feel branches back here, I guess. And it's like a, a pulling sensation. This would happen often with me in deliverance where I, my feet would like cramp and like, and like cramp like this. And I could feel these, I realized they were branches. So the branches are tied to the roots. Now, Sarah Victor had a, a dream this morning. And uh, you, want, you want to share the dream? Uh, a bunch of us were in a house waiting for Paul, and suddenly there were snakes everywhere in the house. Okay, nice and loud, loud, because we hear you here. Yeah. They got in our way, and we couldn't do the things we were supposed to do and get ready. Um, I wanted to go to the bathroom and couldn't because there were snakes in the plumbing pipes. Um, so um, the webinars had started and was proceeding. This is, I'm dreaming about today's webinar. I had rented a room and bathroom from Aslan's for the webinar. I tried to go to the bathroom, but it was pitch dark because the fluorescent tube light had gone out. I debated whether to ask Paul for a new tube light. Do you want the part about Barbara also? Oh, Barbara came in and said, you, 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 pointing at a bunch of us. There were six to eight of us that she pointed to, and we were in a room that was the temple. It felt like a good temple. It was rather plain, had a serving counter and an island. It also had a bunch of comfortable chairs. And she said, now stay and pray, meaning to pray all night. I was startled at first because I wasn't used to praying all night, and then I thought I could manage it. So I'm wondering, you know, the bathroom had no windows. Maybe that's why it was dark. Oh, the bathroom had <coughs> no windows. So when she told me the dream, I remembered that we had taken um, a few trees down at Azel's place, and I was using them for firewood at our house. But some of the wood that I was using, when I picked it up, after I put it into the fireplace, I, I had this itching sensation, and it, it was like I was a, allergic to certain pieces of wood. And I started thinking, I, I said, I'm wondering if there's one tree on our property. Okay, remember, we're talking about trees, branches, roots. One, one of the trees had witchcraft on it. And so... I, I've been thinking about this, and so Sarah told me the dream. So we walked around the property, and we realized uh, that all the trees seem to have um, uh, witchcraft on them. And not only that, that underneath uh, the high desert from this area, uh, probably going maybe to the mountains a little bit, all the way into Barstow, there is a huge aquifer. There is a very, very large aquifer that... Uh, that I'm wondering now has, has been contaminated. And, and so the Lord is exposing now the witchcraft, which would be the snakes. And so uh, Sarah and I prayed, and I could feel witchcraft coming off of, off of the property. So then this probably then is tied to there not being any windows. Uh, on February the 5th, 2015, uh, Jana uh, Green had this word. Branches are coming through our feet. The left branch is more contaminated. Windows on left and window in front. For the men, the male tree is contaminated. There is something out of alignment that's prohibiting healing. 
When another saint that is doing something, I can see it. This is real time, roots, branches, windows. Every individual eye needs to be tuned. So we have the seven eyes of the Lord, and uh, we, have, we have talked about that before, which are where people say the chakra points are. There are actually seven eyes of the Lord mentioned in Zechariah 3, Zechariah 4, and in Revelation. So there's something about branches connecting through the windows to us. So you put your hand right about here. So I put my hand here. I can feel. So I can feel, feel a window here. So there is, a, there is a window connected to each eye of the Lord. So uh, let's, let's show this uh, picture first. Jana drew this. So, John, you want to explain this picture? There were windows placed in different positions in each room. The one in the middle is just an example. And, the, and those, all the rooms around it are corresponding. They seem to all go to a, the same vanishing point. As, as well, there's doors, steps. And anyway, it's, to me, this is giving a visual reference to the interdimensional kingdom, the house of God, which is us. Okay, so while you're multitasking, I'm back on wood chips. You're back on what? Wood chips. Okay. If I say generational fractals, do you get a hit on that? Yes. Okay, so as you said that you quoted the scripture about I see men walking like trees. Trees often had to do with generations. So if you're looking at wood chips, you're looking at generations that have been fractured. And the fractal pattern would, um, the fractured fractal pattern may have to do with something that has to be dealt with to bring the house in order. Can I add to that? Yes. So, and what she's saying is true. Just to bring a scripture to mind, they will be called repair or breach in streets in which they dwell. And it has very much to do with pathways. And we had never decided why you had two pathways. And I think you have a left and a right pathway because of the father and son, I mean, father and mother influence. You could either go right or left on the pathway. You still got to your house. And then you were talking about the right and the left, meaning father and mother, or mother and father, rather. So the two pathways may be your two generational lines. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm going to read a word soon that deals with the pathway. So, so now we have, we have branches, roots, windows. <coughs> the branches connect through the windows through the windows to us, to each of the seven eyes of the Lord. Um, when you first started talking about the windows, I looked, and I had the sense that they were actually free-floating. Maybe they're supposed to be in position, but they were like free-floating. They were I like what? Free-floating. Free-floating. So they were not uh, locked into position. They were not in position. And but when I first came in this morning, I always <coughs> looked to see what's happening. And I saw... A picture perfect corn fields just you know waving in the wind so it's I thought it, it's the harvest so <coughs> it ties in with what you said the windows are worth the blessing which is not yet ours and Don's word had actually had, the, had the wheat and shaft in it. yeah so you know good things if the windows are in place okay so look at 2nd Kings 719 then the officer had answered the man of God and said now look if the Lord would make windows in heaven, so that means there's windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And then he said, yes. In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. So it's interesting that the assumption is, yes, there are windows in heaven. Then if you look at Ecclesiastes 12.13, That was 2 Kings 7.19. Ecclesiastes 12.3. 
Now, this is actually talking about death. So let's start with one. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them, while the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are not darkened, and the clouds do not return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house tremble, so we're talking about old jays and the trembling, and the strong men bow down when the grinders, that's the teeth, cease because they are few, and those who look through the windows grow dim. So we've always said, well, the windows are eyes, but I'm wondering if the windows are the windows. You know, I find that the Bible really does mean what it says and not what we say it means. That's really important. The Bible means what it says, not what we say it means. My opinion. Coming through the windows, and each one of the branches was coming up to an eye. Right. So it occurs to me that it might be the verse, and it, I can't even remember where it is, where the, where the branch, where the branch has, has, it's the olive branch, and it's feeding into a, a bowl, and the bowl is coming down and lighting That's something. Right, chapter 4. See, See, you said that, that, you know, we've got the seven lights, right? And each one of the lights is one of, it, it's, it, it corresponds to one of the parts of the spirit, and each one of the spirits also corresponds to one of the parts of the eyes. These branches are probably feeding the eyes for the light. Okay, say that again. The branches. The branches, in, in the branches that feed the bowl. Remember the right, bowl right. that's on the top that's feeding the fire? That's right, because the, the two olive branches come down. The male and female side, yeah. Yeah. And the oil drips in. Oh, interesting. So I think it's feeding the fire to each of the oh, eyes, to each good. of the lights. That is good. Just a corresponding understanding to that. We need to um, keep in perspective that we're dealing with frequencies, which has everything to do with the connections. Why don't you explain the picture now that we have uh, the other picture? On this one here? Yeah. So I think this was um, several months ago, and it may have been during a school a academy that we had. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, I saw these windows, too, open, signifying heaven. But on the individual person, there were multiple windows, and they were doing exactly what Sarah said earlier. They, they were moving and not in position. And actually, this was corporate, I believe. And uh, there were two gates, like a vesper. One, you go through one gate and then the other. And in the midst was this, like, whirlwind. Did you see four, four sets of four spinning around? Yeah, four sets of four. I have a few things from Tobias. But I, I want to take a moment to share what's going on. What's happening right here, this is an example of how we can deepen our relationship with the Lord. He will bring revelation through dreams. And we're going to be mentioning soon a, a new book that we have out by Barbara Parker. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but whether it's dreams, visions, prophetic words, that information is only the start of a conversation about what God is showing us. So then what's happening is this is coupling together with some pictures that Janet has drawn that she's seen. And so now we're coming together, sharing the information so we can continue to explore. So it's okay if you're not tracking with what's going on or if this isn't making sense, is because not all of it makes sense to us either. But we do know, what we do know is that this is information that's coming from God. It is scriptural. So now we just need to understand what in the world's going on. And sometimes the full understanding um, how can I word that actually? I was going to say sometimes the full understanding doesn't come, but I'll re rephrase that and say we find that this kind of understanding continues to unfold. And every once in a while we'll learn something new that contradicts what we had believed a few years ago, but, but we'll find that, that it's scripture that corrects us, not just a new word. So we're always looking to confirm. That's why you notice we're bringing up a lot of Bible verses, because that's what it boils down to is what what is it that God is unraveling about his word that was already written down? So, Tobias has said, concerning your dream where you checked out three hours late from the cabin, it's wondering if it is possibly about the enemy robbing time or having the right yeah. to do so. Yeah. That's excellent. Okay. 
um, said when you explain the roots and windows and branches, there's a time in your dream as well, wonders if the branches and roots and time are connected with or into time that the enemy has a right to steal or impact it because of those roots. I that's true also. Okay. So repeat that again. Okay, well the, the wording, um, is kind of, he's kind of pouring okay. out a thought. It says, I wonder if the branches and roots and time are all connected and if the enemy has rights to steal or impact our times. You know, I've never put <coughs> time together with that dream, but that certainly is true. And, and it's, in a sense, nine o'clock would be a more rational time to check out. So the enemy has, has slowed down time or put us into the wrong time. So that's a good observation. Mm -hmm. Uh, he had a sense that in that first window picture that you were showing, it looked like a washing machine that was moving clockwise inside it. And then finally, he's pondering if the wood chips from the trees are not only fractals, but possibly representing body, soul, and spirit parts. I think that's also true. It should be the fractal, fracture. Okay, Isaiah 24, 18. Remember in my dream, I said, why is the window open? So some windows can be open that are not supposed to be open. Now, in, in deliverance, I, I have a sense more that the windows uh, are contaminated rather than open. So, again, when we're talking about something dimensionally, it's, it's hard to express what it really means. Are they contaminated or open? And they're not supposed, they're not supposed to be open. Some windows are open they are supposed to be closed. The, that I don't know yet. But listen to this, because this is in a negative way. Uh, let's start with verse 16. <coughs> From the ends of the earth we have heard songs, glory to the righteous. But I said, I am ruined, ruined. Woe to me, the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Indeed, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear in the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth, and shall be that he who flees from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he who comes up from the midst of the pit shall be caught in the snare, for the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth are shaken. So here it appears that the windows are, are negative. Now, I, I laugh many times. I have a, a couple of clients we worked with of years, and we often joke that someone says, well, I just need to get rid of the demon of fear, then I'm going to be all right. And what we're finding out that, <clears throat> that our spirit soul especially can be fractured and that, that they can be cast off into different places, and when they come back, each part has to go through a deliverance of thrones, windows, powers, elders, and not only that, but there is, uh, there's things with time, there's things with uh, the generations, and so the deliverance is, goes on and on and on. And when you think that you finally finish, then you discover something new, and then the Lord deals with it, and then there's another set of windows. And so the complexity of this is beyond understanding, frankly. So mine is ESV. I think you do New King James, right? So it's interesting to me that as you're reading, every time you said fear, ESV says terror. And I think it takes it to a whole different level if it is terror. So I don't know what the actual original word is. Yeah, I'd have to check in the Hebrew. But terror is, is much worse than just it fear. Is. Well, actually, the context would indicate terror. And... Um, it was using the word traitors as opposed to whatever the word was you were using in verse 16. For the traitors have betrayed, with betrayal the traitors have betrayed. Wow. Terror and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. He who flees at the sound of terror shall fall into the pit. He who climbs out of the pit, caught in the snare. For the windows of heaven are open, the foundations of the earth tremble. I have to wonder what this all has to do with impending 
um, <coughs> discipline or judgment or whatever that will at some point come upon the earth, especially in light of the things we're seeing now, like the thing on Prophecy News Watch this last week was talking about volcanic eruptions and that kind of thing, not to mention terrorists. So it may be that the windows are very tied, not only to blessing, but to judgment. Okay, that makes sense. And then we'll go over here. Uh, I just want to throw in where I always go. <clears throat> I think the windows are connected to time, which is very interesting. You brought that up in your dream. But it's, it's perceptual. It's a way of seeing. So I, don't, I have this question. So if the windows in and of themselves evil, or they perceive that way and actually neutral, my tendency is to think they're neutral, they're contaminated, or, or, op or rightly open. But By information. Or yeah. um, I was wondering what you were reading, because every time you would say windows, my version, which is NIV, says floodgates. And so it's interesting that when we pray or worship, sometimes we pray, God, open, you know, pour out the floodgates or pray. If I remember, open. and I, I'm being cautious here, but I think that windows and floodgates are very similar in the Hebrew translation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me go ahead and bring up uh, Gary from online. Actually, a little bit ago, brought up Genesis seven eleven, which is the beginning of the well. It's part of the Noah story, and and when it talks about the waters coming, one of the words used is floodgates. There too. Interesting. And it does seem to be the same word. And there was. In the, in the ark, I think there was one window that looked up. I forgot about that. Yeah, in the ark, there was one window, I think, that looked up. Yep. The context of this passage, uh, Isaiah 24, is judgment of the whole earth, right? So if God is judging, I mean, what's coming through that window could still be righteous because it's from him, right? The window could be righteous, but he's basically judging what's coming down the earth. He, his forces, his power, his... Okay, that is a good observation, actually. I just wanted to share a dream that was so similar that you're talking about where we were in a bedroom and there was a whirlwind outside and like lightning forces like the Aralim angels started coming in and they hit the window and they actually, the lightning went around the window frame and we kind of like scooted to the <coughs> hallway outside of the bedroom because the lightning started entering like through trailing fingers into the bedroom and I realized it's it it would have looked like the branches you're talking about that's exactly what the branches look like it looked like the but, it, but the lightning out. was not fast it was going click 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 but lightning fingers would be the branches yes but for me it was pretty fast and it was coming in and we had to scoot out into the hallway and this happened about this dream was about two months ago. And as we're peeking in, the Lord, the spirit of the Lord actually asked um, to come into the bedroom and stand there as the whirlwind came and the beings. And it was, it was about transformation. It was about like f changing something in us. It, yeah, so it was a- Fascinating. Okay, look at Joel 2.9, then we'll go to Jana. This is Joel's army. Now, not only is it, I think it's a physical army, but it seems to be a spiritual army. Notice this, starting with Joel 2.6. Before then, people rhythm, uh, writhe in pain. All faces are drained of color. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall. So we believe wall is dimensions. Like men of war, everyone marches in formation. They do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they are not cut down. They run to and fro in the city. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. They enter at the windows like a thief. So there's the windows again. I just want to bring in, um, in perspective, though we are looking at a judgment scripter, I'm brought back around to uh, a word in James 1, 
Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from, um, is from what? From above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. In the exercise of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth so that the world, that we would be kind of first fruits among the, his creatures. So always in a literal sense, it's not always in a literal sense. In other words, it, it is a perspective of heaven and we have access to that on a perceptual base. But not only that, it's provision as we started out in Malachi. Just wanted to bring that full circle. Jeremiah 9.21 says, for death has come up through our windows. Um, Jeremiah, would you write so that to me? So sure. Jeremiah what? Jeremiah 9.21, for death. Jeremiah 9.21. Yeah, okay. death has come up through our windows. Um, wh when I saw the window, um, it was not linked to the branch. It was separate. It was off by itself. Mm -hmm. But also, um, down the branches come our generational blessings. Yes. And, and so, if the branch is disconnected from the window, we're not going to get those blessings. Yeah, let me uh, read, I think of Isaiah 11. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch mm -hmm. shall grow out of his roots. Of course, the branch, the branch is Jesus. Uh, we are the vine, he is, we are the branches, he is the, well, how's it go? He is the vine, we are the branches, that's correct. When you first read your dream again this morning, and you were talking about the white branches and comparing them to birch, I got a bigger sense than I have before that the white represents righteousness. And I either missed you saying they were jerky in the past, but I think what, I think you were saying the contaminated branches. She was seeing the righteous branches, and it was the click, 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 click. They're supposed to be righteous, but when the enemy interferes, it can't flow. See, the wrong one was open, and the branch could not correctly connect to, to me and my yeah, mother. Which so it the was not connected yet. Yeah. The click, click, click versus the lightning. Every good and perfect gift. Yeah, it was not connected. That's good. Okay, here's a, here's a word from Jana, February the 10th, 2015. <clears throat> See, it was two years ago, and literally this has put, been put in the back shelf since then, after we did the prayer. So, now Jana, listen to this. Okay. So, doors are to rooms, mm -hmm. gates to dimensions, windows connect to paths where time is no hindrance. The eyes of the Lord that go to and fro are in right time wherever there is a living stone. The paths connect to the grid. The realms exist by what is agreed to believe and created to exist. Uh, Davida, um, she was sharing that she's feeling fire or electricity radiating down the bottom of her right foot. Uh, she thinks it has to do with palmoni, as the fire has been on the back radiating since before the class, down in arms. She says this happens often, and said the foot started when Paul spoke about branches coming through the feet. Yeah, okay. uh, Tobias had said, in Sarah's dream there was a dark bathroom, and she said there were no windows. He was pondering if there may have been windows, but they were closed, and wondering if they need to be open. I agree. Um, Hillary had pointed out uh, Daniel's windows face Jerusalem. Uh, and, and he prayed in the upstairs room, wondering if there's something to do with the alignment of windows from floating to alignment. Mm. I like that. Okay, uh, who was that? that was, her name was Hillary. I think, <coughs> that's, I think that's true. And then, uh, yep, okay, we'll stop there. Okay. Uh, February the 18th, uh, 2015, mm. this is the client. I felt a pulsation like a heart coming through a window. Window is in the sky in heaven and in the wall. We believe now the wall are dimensions. The windows in the wall have a different purpose than the walls in the heavens. 
I, f- I feel like the windows on the wall are all bad. The windows in heaven, some good and some bad. The windows of heaven need to be aligned with the conscious. Seems to be an ungodly line between his windows and windows and my windows and generational line. Uh, feel dirty heat tied to the windows. Uh, lack of unholiness, unholy revelation. Uh, so that's all very interesting. As you were speaking, I can't get rid of the scripture that says, blessed is the man whose in his heart are the highways to Zion. When you read that scripture, I got whacked. But um, I just, I'm just thinking, perceptually, a path is either created for a heavenly position mm-hmm. or an ungodly one by, a, by the beholder which is a time element because in acknowledgement or awareness, we make a wall of time. Yeah, if you, uh, I remember years ago I read a, uh, a novel and this was all based on quantum physics and the fact that, that you create your own reality. And you see, apart from God, uh, which then is all new age, uh, you know, truth, truth is truth. First of all, God creates truth. And their point was, well, I can, if my life stinks, then I can create a new life by observing a better life. Now, the reality is, that is true if you are in Christ. In Christ, your perception does, which is we would call faith. Your faith sees a better way, and you're, you're trusting in Christ. You're not trust, trusting yourself to create the reality. Got that? Now trust yourself to create reality. In Christ, you're trusting him through you to create the correct reality. So I had been thinking earlier about if there's righteous windows, there's probably unrighteous windows. So then I got quite a hit on the comment about Joseph and the windows pointed toward Jerusalem and was thinking about Daniel. I mean Daniel. Okay. Sorry, Daniel. And I was thinking about how the Muslims know to pray toward Mecca. And then Jana talks, and then you talk, and truth is truth. And I think this is probably another example of how the enemy already realizes things that we haven't realized, which would be why perhaps the Muslims do bow down to Mecca because there are unrighteous windows that they're accessing as opposed to the righteous windows that we need to access. Why not? Okay, I want you to be aware right now, the Lord sovereignly is now doing deliverance on the windows that are tied to you. You feel that? You feel the deliverance? Yes. There's actually deliverance going on. Okay, we've had an interesting time during the break. A friend uh, made the observation that the... Okay, depending upon which system you use, the morning watch is from 6 to 9, which were the two times in my dream, 6 and 9. And I think, if, if I look correctly, I think it was during that watch that Jesus walked on the water. But someone's going to have to check on that. But I, th- I think that's true. But there, are so, there seems to be some characteristics of the watch from 3 to 6 in the morning, which I could not find during the break, but... Uh, that might be something interesting to investigate. So after two years, that's never come up before, which is very interesting. Uh, Marion from online had um, talked about from your dream, you talked about the road that divides forming two pathways that merge back together. She was hearing the phrase bread and butter, which is a superstitious expression when two people like walked by each other. Right? And so she was wondering um, oh, with an object separating them. That was kind of the specific thing. Right. So she's wondering if there's a superstition or a witchcraft connected to what was going on in that dream. I don't know, but I can feel the witchcraft when you said that. I feel deliverance coming off the windows. So during the entire break, um, I've been feeling deliverance coming off your windows. Uh, it's um, tied to the stars, actually. So we're learning that witchcraft is only one aspect of evil energy tied to the stars. And originally, it all felt, the, uh, all felt like witchcraft. But, so this, this feels like it's tied to the stars, but it's not witchcraft. 
but it feel, has that fine. It's like the Lord's fine tuning us in our discernment. Just a random thought in, ver, in terms of right versus left and the mother's side being left, the father's side being right. I was teaching a Bible study last week, and the concept of authority being on the right was illustrated in something I read in terms of um, military authority. Anywhere you go, the higher ranking person with more authority is on the right in the military. And in a parade march, or it, the article I read said even if they're just walking down the street and if it's a private and a sergeant or a private lieutenant, the higher rank stands on the right, always. And I was thinking about that, and Jesus sits down at the right hand of the Father. And because at the left of Jesus. Uh-huh. So if we think about that in terms of male and female, it's it would really throw present day um, power structure, political correctness into disarray. However, who's given authority over the home? The father, the husband. And he's the protector. And so he's on the right. So I think that's interesting in terms of the maternal versus the fraternal line. Well, what you see happening in our society is everything that God has said is now being twisted mm -hmm. and fought against. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you look at every time something happens, it, it is very clear they do not like God. They hate God, and they want to reverse what he's been saying. All right. So now here's something else that's interesting and uh it almost seems irrelevant, but it's interesting. When I was in Zurich, Switzerland, and this had to have been very early in the 2000s, and I, I couldn't find out the when it was. I was sitting in the church, and I can remember the pastor came to me, and he said, you know, the people in the city do not want you here. And I thought, well, what's new? <laughs> and... I remember I got, I got so frustrated. That's when I, I wrote that declaration that's in the front of um, uh, Heaven Truck. But something else happened. I was, I was sitting, I think it was during the worship before I started speaking, and it may have been a youth conference, and all of a sudden, I, I think it's probably the first time I felt myself going up. And all of a sudden, I went up, and I started going, hey, hey, and hey. And if you've been around me, you know that when the power of God comes on me, I'll start doing that. Hey, well, some time ago, and I can't remember how, but the letter hey is the fifth letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Now, let me read to you what's about the fifth letter. The letter hey is the fifth letter in the Hebrew alphabet as well as as a number of other Semitic languages alphabets. Uh, through the ancient Phoenician language, the letter He actually became the modern letter E in the English and Latin alphabet. The original meaning of the letter He is shrouded in mystery as it has been interpreted as everything, everything from thread to fence to window. In ancient Semitic languages, none, nonetheless, it has an extremely interesting story. Then you go on, so spiritually, the letter He has many different aspects. It has a numerical value of five, thus represents five fingers, the five senses, discernment, and the five dimensions, because there's more than five dimensions. The letter He is often used instead of writing out one of the most common names used for God. I find it interesting, as soon as you did the first He, I started feeling deliverance. More yeah, deliverance. more deliverance. It did increase. So last year, February 23rd, was the first time I could discern windows, and I feel them where I feel thrones. Uh, and then Jana has this. So sometime, maybe about the same time, 
Winds of change for the latter rain, you must go down to go up. Okay, I'm sorry, that made you have to do the depth. Opening the windows was a must. Your perception had positioned you in a depth to go down to where the treasures were laid to rest. Your inheritance is deep, unfathomable riches to receive. The inheritance of the land is a place you go in where you stand. You go down to behold, to leave the old for the gold. This resurrection power that will take you up, but you must leave the old behind for your perception will position you for the original design. These treasures of inheritance that were laid to rest, they were covered up in the books of the library. The alt altered word that was blocked holds back the truth that was lost. And now there is more for you to believe. Seeing is not believing, but believing is seeing. The windows are open to see what you must have. Shut the door behind you to go in for Zion has a plan. You are all connected by light. This journey you travel wins the fight. Blesses the man who in his heart are the highways to Zion. The smallest part is the biggest plan. The original design where you stand, go in to go up, go down to release your treasures you will bring. This platform of justice, the platform of the king, you will all stand on the sea of glass. The nations beckon to you as inheritance. So, Jana, my friend, wisdom is here. Okay, so I feel wisdom like this and like this on the back part of my head. So, cross all the way across here and the back part of my head. So, say, Lord, I'd like to discern wisdom. So, Jan, I think wisdom has a message, perhaps. While you're bringing that up, I'll share. Um, Tobias was pondering that if there's a connection between fivefold ministries and windows, mm. he th thought it was when you're bringing up hay, or, or do the, do the fivefold <coughs> ministries use the windows to operate? Fivefold ministries use windows to operate. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, John wrote this to me this morning. This is all I heard this morning. This is why I'm eating my cereal and tidying up the house. At least someone was spiritual this morning. Thank you, John. James 3, wisdom is first from above, pure and peaceable, anchored in love, so the way up is the way in, the new Jerusalem from the beginning to the end. Come up to see where from the heart you first believe all else will be given to you, for you seek his righteousness and his kingdom that is true dunamis in this corporate gathering will expand and increase for healing of the body for those who perceive the wisdom to believe. So now we have healing tied to this also, don't we? Wisdom has a sound. Wherever you go, it will release for the kingdom of God is in the inner place from where you see. <sighs> the wisdom from above is first pure and full of peace. The agreement with God is all you need. <sighs> come up, come up. to the place where you abound a heavenly position brought on by sound and those 
who are unsatisfied and not fulfilled the blessings of the kingdom will become real. Disappointment is the only thing in the way the fear of it keeps you astray. But the path is easy to find. From once you step in, you'll be aligned. And you will go up together for it's a corporate design to see as he sees and heal time. One step of obedience will catch you up For he will fix history. This you can trust. For the finished work was before the foundation. The original creative design for all generations. Mm. Is there more? Because there's, there's a lot more. of deutimus here. Yeah, deutimus. I feel more for wisdom. Anybody else have more? Anybody seeing or hearing anything? This is uh, Proverbs 8. Does not wisdom cry out, and understanding lift up her voice? She takes her stand on top of the high hill. Beside the way where the paths meet. She cries out by the gates at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. To you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O you simple ones, understand prudence. And you fools, be of an understanding heart. Listen. For I will speak of excellent things, and from the opening of my lips shall come right things. For my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are with righteousness. <clears throat> Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. They are all plain to him who understands, and right to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Excellent. Thank you. Sir, could you send me that word that you just typed? Okay, wisdom still has more. Now, I've never heard wisdom before. I can hear wisdom, so there's a sound, and when I say wisdom, I'm hearing that sound. It's a very, very high-pitched sound. Ryan? Tobias just chatted two minutes ago. I hear a high-pitched sound after Jana ended her part on the word brought by wisdom. Sound draws long, and I see a light, uh, like a spaceship going into faster than light, drawing long in a dark black place. Wow. 
Repeat that last sentence again. Okay. Uh, the sound draws long, and I see a light like a spaceship going I into light speed, uh, drawing long in a dark black place. Can we get Tobias on the line? I'm okay. On so we'll work on bringing up Tobias. Yes. When we say that wisdom has a message, uh, I'm going to bring this up probably at least once every episode because we have new people who join us. Uh, it is our understanding that all this information is from God and he's using his servants to bring certain components of the information. And so we're not saying that we are seeking information from any other kind of being. We are testing that this being is serving God. And then the information that is received will also then be tested against the word of God. I might add that there is a debate in theological circles whether wisdom is Jesus or wisdom is a created being. And I think there's a couple of key verses where it's clear to me that wisdom is a created being. Um, and uh, what's very interesting also is that I think it's in, uh, it's in chapter 8 where it says that wisdom was the master architect with God in creating and we actually could discern wisdom as a build, the word is builder or architect. And um, okay, let me see, we may be shifting actually. Okay, so now we're with, we're with I am now. So I feel I am right across here. Uh, Jenna, where's that verse? It's uh, Proverbs 8, the build, he's, wisdom is the. Okay, turn to Proverbs chapter 8. Yes, I'm going to start in 19. Okay. My fruit is better than gold, even pure gold. Still talking about wisdom. Oh. And my yield better than the choice of silver. I walk in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice to endow those who love me with wealth, that they may fill their treasuries. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old. From everlasting, I was established from the beginning, from the earliest of times on the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While he had not yet made the earth and the fields, nor the first dust of the world, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above, when his springs of the deep became fixed. When he set the seas as boundaries so that the water would not tra transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master workman. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the world his earth, and having my delight in the sons of men. So while you're doing that, I, something Tobias said was interesting to me. It sounded like he said there was sound before sight, I mean, sound before light. Mm -hmm. It was long. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let there be is a sound. <laughs> right. So I feel I am here, and I was with, uh, I probably coaching session and I realized I was feeling movement this way so now I'm not sure when Jana did this uh, but you notice you see uh, like there's equations here and there's math in fact then you have um, pi 3.14 on the right hand side uh, what are the what Hebrew letters are those uh, well, that's actually pi over there. Um, or is that? No, we established before that that letter above the COS yeah. is actually a Hebrew letter. That's right. But it happens to look like Thank the you. Greek letter pi. And then cosine equals. So this evidently, the wisdom was a master architect in mathematical equations. When I was doing this, my thought was this. This is like a substructure in which everything's created out of. Right, and I, so I feel, I feel the equation, this is very strange, but so with I am, whose course is, is what uh, the Father said to Moses, I am that I am. So with I am are all the original uh, equations. 
So all the math foundation of the multi-universe. So like this. Okay, now I have something in my hand. <laughs> a torch? It appears to be a torch to me because it looks like fire is surrounding it. Okay, Lord, what do I do first, the drawing or this? Tor I need to do something with this. Or Tobias. <laughs> or Tobias. <laughs> or Tobias. And you only had 10 minutes of material. <laughs> well, I can't move my hand, so I guess we better deal with this first. Hey. Anybody have any clue? Paul. It, I think it's, I agree with, oh. uh, with Jana that it is a torch, but I feel like God is bringing light to this situation. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I took care of that. <laughs> right, so John drew this, and what I, what I did is I put my finger on each illustration, and I could discern different things. <laughs> so... Um, So notice, notice the window up on the left, and um, so look and see the equations. And so I actually I have a friend who's a math, in fact, just graduated from Berkeley in mathematics, and so he uh, this this one there's one of the equations that he it says is tied to gravity. Now you understand that Janet does not know this, <laughs> so she she writes the equation from Revelation that's tied to gravity. I know this may be difficult if you're online, but the rod on the right, be on her right hand side, is a rod. This is tied to the chariots of fire. Now something in my hand again. Power rulers. So I feel powers now in my hand. Okay, Barbara. So just won't this go to Barbara? Tobias, I haven't forgotten about you. Okay, go ahead. Before. We got the interpretation that God was shedding light. The instant you said, what is this? I got the pass the torch, like in a relay. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you're supposed to pass the torch somehow. Okay. Is, is the torch back in my hand or is it something different? Well, there's definitely lines connected to it. Lines that go out. And um, I'll s I can send the picture to you if you like. Yeah, I'll send that to everyone who registered. Yeah. So... This is tied to dunamis, is my Dunamis, yeah. Something right. just occurred to me about when Barbara, when you said that it needed to be handed out, mm -hmm. at our last fellowship, we, we, you paused, pondered the question on why more people don't, aren't able to walk in their gifts or they think they don't have any gifts. Mm -hmm. So it occurred to me that something that would be good is for you, like as a pastor, or I thought we might be doing it at fellowship, but anyways, to release everyone to demonstrate their gifts in the body of Christ instead of being uh, forbidden from doing so as they had in the past. Yeah, you know, the phrase I use, but, but I'm not that gifted. And, right. and what happens, we have, we have a fellowship and there's people that stand out with their giftings and so other people feel, well, I, I don't have anything to offer. Well, that's not true, that we all have something to offer. We're all gifted. Um, I just have a certain function right now. Brian has a certain function. Brian's function is to clarify my function. <laughs> so then I'm wondering, if, is that part of what you're doing with that, is that you are to hand that out to everyone as a release to well, move in the so. gifts in the body of Christ? You may be right. I was kind of avoiding that. But <laughs> Lines of inheritance. Lines of inheritance. Oh, yeah. Barbara. So we'll go back to Barbara. And then we'll go to you. So I have a question. And I don't know the answer. Is what is in your hand have anything to do with the fear of the Lord? Yes, there's a hit with that. Okay, because I've been getting Proverbs 9, 10 for the last 20 minutes. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's correct. Okay, so um, we'll definitely go to you. But we need to dovetail with what Barbara just said, with what Marion had posted online. Uh, we have Isaiah 24, 18. Um, and the way she typed it was, uh, that he who flees from the noise of fear shall fall into the pit. So it would appear then that That's fear right. also has a noise. Really? And, mm -hmm. Very good. 
here. I can hear noise now. It's a little bit lower pitch. Yeah, this is Jana, this is not who you thought it was. This is wisdom. What is? That lady. Oh, the lady in the middle? <laughs> That's wisdom. Paul. Oh. So, so, you get on the mic. <laughs> this, in the origin of this drawing, was wisdom within. That's because yeah, we put, put your hand there. That's wisdom. This is wisdom. Yes. Right? Well, that's how it was intended. You're right. This is wisdom within. This concludes the morning session here in May 2017 of Exploring Heavenly Places. Let's close in prayer. God, we are humbled and honored of what you've been sharing with us here today. And Lord, we are in awe. Lord, I pray that you would continue to unfold what you are sharing with us in our hearts and our minds. We could continue to follow you and understand more and more about you as we come closer to you, Lord. Pray that you bless everyone as we depart from this place, both here, online, and watching as a recording, and that all this will bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen.